Um, my name is Eileen Tormey and I'm joined with my colleague Roisin or my partner in crime in QI. Um, we work in the QPS improvement team uh, in the National Quality Patient Safety Directorate. And we work as um, quality improvement facilitators, advisors, coaches, um, you name it, anything to do with QI, we really wrangle our way into it and um, do our best. So I'm not going to keep you long. We're going to split our presentation in two. If you can go on to that slide, that's great, Roisin. So our key messages for today for you are, what is quality improvement and why do we use it? So I'm going to be dealing with that particular point. And then the other two key messages are, how can we engage with staff and leaders for improvement and, and to give you some um, quality improvement tools and resources. And Roisin's gonna look at those two um, points. So we are gonna move straight into it. No messing about what is quality improvement. So we have a couple of quoted definitions that we can um, share with you. In the framework for improving quality in our health service, quality improvement is defined as the combined and unceasing efforts of everyone, including healthcare professionals, patients, family members, to make changes that will lead to better patient outcomes, better experience of care and continued development and support of staff. The Health Foundation defines it as a syst systematic and coordinated approach to solving a problem using specific methods and tools with the aim of bringing about a measurable improvement. And you'll see down there at the bottom right, I think that graphic is up there, Roshan, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that little cartoon there kind of says it all. Uh, all improvement is change but not all change is improvement. And that quote is attributed to Dr. Don Berwick, co-founder of the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. Um, the emphasis, um, it emphasizes the need for a deliberate and data-driven approach to change as not all change leads to better outcomes. And it encourages us to focus on change that is evidence-based and has a positive impact on the patient care and outcomes rather than just change for change's sake. So I think we're on to the next one there, which is the model for improvement. So the model for improvement, what is it? It's an approach or a framework that we use to drive continuous quality improvement. It was adopted by the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, and it's essentially a method for structuring an improvement project, um, developing and testing an idea using a really simple framework. So the model consists of two parts. Now, the first three questions there, they help us define what we want to achieve, what ideas we think might make a difference and what we'll measure to help us understand if the change is actually an improvement. The second part is the PDSA or the Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle. And this outlines the steps for the actual testing of the change ideas. The cyclical nature shows the, the change to be refined and improved through repeated cycles of testing and learning. And this provides a vehicle for continuous improvement. And the rapid IRT of tests for change allow improvements to be abandoned, which yeah, does happen. <laughs> and takes a lot of guts to abandon it, believe you me, uh, adopted or adapted. And then hopefully they can be scaled up and spread. So really quality improvement is not a one and done. You never stop. You absolutely never stop. Next slide there, Roshi. A lot of times we get asked the question, so what's the difference between quality improvement and audit or quality improvement and research? And this can stump people an awful lot of time and, and it, it really helps to know what the difference is so you don't end off going down the wrong track. So research helps us to define what is possible. Audit tells us how we're currently performing, usually against the standard or guideline. And quality improvement is the process of moving from how we are performing towards what is possible and beyond as demonstrated in many projects. And can often use the Toy Story, um, Buzz Lightyear to infinity and beyond with quality improvement. Uh, next slide, please there, Roisin. Um, so, 
where do quality improvement ideas uh, come from? And inspiration can come from anywhere. And this is really a pertinent one because of what Lucy uh, was saying there that this year the focus is really going to be on innovative, never seen before or different approaches to a similar problem, but not the same. Um, so successful improvement thrives on sharing ideas and learning from other improvers. And it's a good idea to read around the subject and engage with subject matter experts when you're trying to generate quality improvement project ideas. You can ask other, IP, other people with quality improvement expertise for advice as they might have run a similar project. But you must remember that you and your team members and your colleagues and your patients and their family members are also subject matter experts. And anybody that the process touches or impacts, you need to be talking to them to find out what's going to make it better for them. So consider looking at ideas from different perspectives or from the perspective of someone who is affected in a different way. And by using a different lens to look at a QI idea, you could come up with a really novel approach. And I think this is my last slide here before I hand you over to Roisin. So where does QI fit in? Quality improvement is the process of combining subject matter experts uh, with all the knowledge uh, of a particular area and then improvement knowledge, quality improvement knowledge in creative ways to develop effective changes for improvement. And that's why I love quality improvement because it really allows you unleash your creativity and your creativeness in so many ways. Um, it's brilliant, absolutely love it for that piece alone. So in order to achieve quality improvement, it's important to have a deep understanding of the specific subject area, as well as some knowledge of improvement strategies and methodologies. And it's by bringing these two areas together that we can innovate and enhance practices and processes or outcomes. And you're all here today as subject matter experts. And by combining this with your QI knowledge, and some of you, it will be newfound QI knowledge, and that's fine. Um, you can bring about effective change and hopefully a successful project for HFH QI Awards. So I'm going to hand you over to Roisin now, and I think Roisin is going to manage her own slides. Um, so I will hand you over. Perfect. Over to Roisin. Thank you so much, Eileen. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you all today. Um, apologies, I've turned my video off because it's a bit wild out here in the West in Galway. So uh, just in case there's network issues. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of engaging for improvement. Now, healthcare, as we all know, is quite complex. And research indicates that staff engagement is the greatest indicator of all organizational performance. Um, at a national HSC staff engagement forum a few years ago, Staff engagement was defined as staff are engaged when they feel valued, emotionally connected, fully involved, enthusiastic, and committed to providing a good service. And I think engagement is really important for quality improvement because unless we engage with the teams, and as Eileen underscored, the service users, the patients, and their families, we'll get nowhere. You can't do quality improvement on your own. So as we said, healthcare is complex. How people think, not just ourselves, but how everybody thinks healthcare works is A to B. You want something done, you plan it out and you do it. But really it's much more complicated than that. So that's where quality improvement really comes to the fore. And when we're planning um, a quality improvement project, when we want others to engage with us on it, to go down the path that we wish to, that we choose to go on, we have to do something called winning hearts and minds. It's been used for years and under a number of different headings, but winning hearts and minds, you can't just give people data and expect people to be won over to be part of your project, but nor can you appeal only to their hearts and values. But it, it is interesting and we won't put it in the chat box now, but if you think to yourselves, what percentage of uh, somebody's heart do you need to appeal to versus their mind when you want to engage with them on a QI project? So appealing to their heart is around getting them intrinsically motivated, getting them a feeling like they're part of the team, helping them to see the outcome for themselves, the people they work with and their patients, service users and families. Whereas the mind, they want to see the data. They want to see the, the value in it, the increased efficiencies and processes. But it's interesting to note that 
95% of a pitch should be at people's hearts rather than 5%. Show them the data, show them the outcomes, but you really need to win over their hearts in order to get them engaged on a project. And engaging your colleagues in your improvement project, um, you might've seen this before. This is called the distribution of innovation or the diffusion of innovation theory. And it was developed back in the 1960s. It's one of the oldest social science theories. And it originated in communication to explain how over time an, an idea can gain momentum through engagement. So it's really relevant for implementing improvement and change. So when you take a look at this slide, and Eileen, maybe you can take a look at the chat box if you don't mind uh, engaging me with me on this one. For all of these people along the curve, you start with the innovators. They're the ones who are really enthusiastic and it might be all, you know, all on board for something new and innovative. As, as Lucy said, we want to try to get these QI projects to be innovative. And then at the other end of the scale, you have what are known as the laggards. And they're the ones that are really the slowest to change. They are averse to change. When you're bringing a new idea to your team and you have all of these different people on your team, who do you feel are the first ones you should really target on influencing? So if you wouldn't mind just putting in the chat box, either innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority or laggards. Just thinking about again, your own team, who do you feel should be really the first? Where should you focus your initial energies on? when you're trying to implement an improvement project. No, Eileen, if you can see the chat box there. There's yeah, I can see the chat box. There is some typing going on, but nobody's press send. Okay, yep. we have some early adopters mm -hmm. and laggards, mm -hmm. the early majority, stakeholders, early adopters. There's another bit of typing going on there I can see. <laughs> Anybody else? No. Early majority. Early majority, okay. And and most of you are on the button. Now, really, I mean, there's no group that you should exclusively put all of your eggs into the basket of, shall we say, but, but there is one group that you potentially should target more than others. So somebody mentioned the laggards. You could spend all your day and all your energy um, trying to sell your story to them and they'll, you'll never convince them. However, don't just disregard the laggards and say, oh, they'll catch up eventually. It's important to try to understand what's behind the resistance. Remember the whole hearts and minds we talked about. Likewise, those innovators at the other end of the scale and the early adopters, they can get carried away with the excitement of the project and not look at the practical applications, but keep them on board because they're a really good support for you in driving the improvement and in building that enthusiasm for it. But research does show that moving the early majority across that chasm is key. So the late majority will likely follow the early majority. And even the laggards, when they see everybody else moving towards your improvement idea, they won't want to be left behind and they'll move along as well. Now, we just have a very two and a half minute video we want to share with you. It's from the BMJ Quality, um, Quality Journal, and they've interviewed two healthcare professionals on their top five tips for carrying out a QI project. And you'll see yourself engagement comes up as one of those, those top five. So, uh, Jen, uh, five tips to uh, carry out a quality improvement project. Can you hear that? What do you think? So yeah, yeah. I think my first one would be about engagement and I think engaging staff from all disciplines, anyone who's going to be affected by your project from the very beginning I think is really important because I think if you get by in the beginning you're more likely to succeed in whatever it is you're implementing. Yeah. That's probably my number one. Yeah. How about you? Um, so a second tip I'd say uh, use a framework. Um, such as the PDSA model for improvement and there are a number of other fr frameworks but that's one I found particularly beneficial and that just helped to really teach you how to go through a quality improvement project step by step so you can really produce some meaningful results rather than just a snapshot picture in time um, which doctors are usually more common, mm. commonly used to doing so I think by using a framework to guide your project I think that that's a good way to get started as well. Okay. I think another one is 
getting feedback from those involved in your project and again I think this probably feeds into my first point about engagement but I think you know the the people who are going to be affected by the project they are the best people to advise on what improvements can be made and you know they're the people working on the ground and if you ask them they're going to give you your answers so I think that's another tip from me. Yeah again a good one and feeding into that um, so you talked about engagement and specifically I would say engaging with um, and getting senior support um, whether that's support of your safety and quality team or a um, consultant or registrar particularly interested in patient safety and quality improvement in your trust I think getting them on board and helping guide you through the process can really help uh, increase your impact. Okay and I think finally I would have a, a tip about kind of tackling resistance to change. I think in any project you do there's always going to be some resistance and I think you you shouldn't be afraid of that and I think you should embrace it and you know go full on in trying to challenge it and overcome it. Definitely. Again that's a really short video we can send you on the, the link if you're interested in watching back again and reminding yourselves. Now the next couple of slides I'm not going to go through in detail but we've included them in the slide pack in case you want to look at them again. And um, they're just a couple of slides, it's just the ideas that, as Eileen mentioned, change ideas and improvement ideas can come from a number of sources. And there was an NHS emergency care improvement program, end of life care project, and they used what's called the fresh eyes approach, where they reviewed a patient relative's journey and they had a walkthrough of four acute hospitals. So these slides will just take you through what the key learnings were from that fresh eyes approach. And basically, as they did the walkthrough with the eyes of the patient and or their families, they could see changes that could happen at a very small level. They didn't take a lot of money. They didn't take a lot of doing, but they made a significant impact on how people perceived the service and how they felt supported and they felt heard. Um, even, even the likes of the, the family room was changed up. They brought in new furniture. They put some pictures on the wall. And as Lucy mentioned, that has been a theme of a number of QI projects in the past with, with having certain rooms done up, adding artwork, changing up the furniture, and that can have a big impact on people and their families. So finally, these last couple of slides will just signpost you to some QI tools and resources. So as you start your QI journey, it might be helpful to know that we have some training online on HSE land. There's three different programs. Introduction to QI is 20 minutes. Foundation in QI will take you about an hour and a half to two hours. And working as a team for improvement is also 20 minutes. We have delivered some virtual and blended programs in the past, and we're currently working on a quality coach development program, uh, which will be rolled out next year. And we have a number of programs that we offer that we fund the RCPI to deliver on our behalf. So there are you know, various uh, programs for either you as an individual or as a team or working across a number of teams. We also have tools and resources. We have an improvement collaborative handbook if you're looking to work across teams. We have a brand new QI guide and toolkit I'm really excited about that's going to be coming out in the next two weeks. I'm really chomping at the bit on that one. We just have to get some final graphic design work done on it. Um, and that really takes you step by step from the first light bulb moment until you're sustaining and spreading your change. We have a QI project poster template. So if you were ever thinking of presenting your work at a conference or even publishing it, that might be a handy resource for you. We have a number of infographics. This one gives you the difference between a quality improvement approach and a quality improvement plan, because we found with the number of services, those terms can often be interchanged, but they're actually quite different things. And we even have uh, an app, a mobile app. It's available on the desktop or on mobile devices. Um, and it is to help healthcare providers reduce harm from falls and pressure ulcers using improvement approaches. So, um, oh, sorry. And last but not least, we have Life QI, which is an online software um, platform for putting your QI projects online. And we have a number of free licenses for testing. So if you're interested in putting your QI project on an online platform, let us know and, uh, and we'd be happy for you to test it for us. We have a couple of links on YouTube if you want to see more. And of course, you're always welcome to connect with us um, either on email or on any of the social media channels. So. Thanks very much. I will 